everyone and a warm welcome to Coffee with Cartos. Winter is clearly here and I hope you all survived the storm we had last last week. Um, my roof is still leaking and my dogs are now permanently under the duvet, which I don't really mind as I don't have a electric blanket. But on the 8th of May was International Donkey Day and we dedicated the whole month of May to donkey stories. Today we'll be discussing um, our work that we do um, in the Tangwakaru as we have an outreach program um, with the donkeys and we've been doing that since 2013. Please also remember to follow us on Facebook and YouTube and as I always say don't be shy to hit that share button. Here to share the challenges, the successes and the very, the very funny side of traveling through the Karoo is our very own Megan White and Diana Tritter. Thanks very much, Corin. It's lovely to be back again on Coffee with Cartos and welcome everybody to today's show. Uh, we hope to keep you nicely entertained. So our journey in the Tankwa began in 2013 when um, we were approached by Robert and Conrad from Africa Burn um, to, uh, who, to help with the donkeys in the Tankwa Karoo. They do a lot of work with the communities and the people and they desperately wanted us to come and uh, give some assistance to the donkeys who are a very important part of the people's lives there. So we, we attended our first community day um, in 2013. 13. Uh, the ride up there was quite long. It was the first time we've ever been into the Karoo um, in the middle of nowhere and we were told just to meet everybody at the Patstal. So we made our way to the Patstal. When we got there, the Patstal was closed. There was no internet connection. We didn't know where we were <laughs> and um, it was quite, the silence was deafening. Um, we've grown to love it now. So we decided to, to drive a little way up further on the R355 and we met, um, funny enough, some, some community members in a, in, a dog, in a cart with two mules who we were told later they're not mules, they're Montefillis. So that's been their name. From... So they said, no, no, you need to turn the vehicle around, go back down to the Potsdam, follow the road till you see the fork in the road. So all well and good, off we tootled down the road and that was the fork in the road. <laughs> so it's been, it's the first memory of the Tankwa that makes us laugh. Um, and as you can see, it's very desolate and, and um, very beautiful, has its own beauty. So since then, we've done four community days at the Patstal in the Western Cape and one at the Halfway House in the Northern Cape, also at Patstal. And funnily enough, the one in the Northern Cape that we did was on the day that we won the World Cup. So it was quite an amazing community day that was. So, um, Diana, we, the community days, are, I'm sure you agree with me, are so much more than just the donkeys. Um, they're just a part of that. I wonder if you want to share some of your, some of your memories. Yes. yes, Megan, thank you very much and hello to everyone. Um, you know, I remember very clearly the very first um, morning that we started, I thought to myself, you know, we will really have to pull finger because the people that we met the previous evening that welcomed us into the Tankwa that we've seen for the first time, they were so passionate that I thought that we really, you know, we will have to, to show our abilities. Anyway, um, now the, the, the Patstal is very well known. It is like the community, it's the post office, <clears throat> sorry, it's the general dealer, it's the bar. It, if you need help, you would go to the Patstal. So the first Saturday morning that we went there, um, it was supposed to start at nine o'clock. When we got da down to the Patstal, a big parking gravel parking lot was prepared for the donkeys, and already there were donkeys waiting for, waiting for us. Um, and funny enough, the most of the donkeys, if you look at the picture, most of the donkeys use the two wheelers because the donkeys are not used to generate the income; they're mostly used to transport transport. Mm. We had our own tent, Megan, um, I don't know if you can still remember that. We had our own tent and you are fanatic about a database. So we had <laughs> to create a database. So each and every donkey that uh, would vis visit the, com uh, the, the um, community day 
was um, put in onto the database, the name of the donkey and the owner. So if you would allow me to make a bit of fun of you, so the donkeys would come in and you would ask the name of the donkey and they would say the name of the donkey is Springbok or the name of the donkey is Pisant. And then Megan would say, how do you spell that? The name of the, don <laughs> the, name of the donkey is Willebok. How would you spell that? And when one donkey was called Whiskey, she didn't ask me how do you spell that <laughs> because we both know how to spell whiskey. Anyway, um, if the, our first point that we looked at was the overall general welfare of the donkeys, Megan. Do you remember? We mm, looked at we're quite surprised. Yeah, and we were surprised here. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, we found that most of the bits, those are the Montefillis, by the way, the picture. Mm. We found that all the bits needed to be replaced, which we did. Mm. Um, the harnesses was kept together with rope and wires. So Ashley was extremely busy with the wiring. And the, obviously the, the harnesses caused quite a lot of wounds. Mm. So as the day would go on, um, Megan, you would remember, uh, the, the people, the African burnt people would run around with ice creams and you would smell the burevors. On, on the, the roaster cook. And, oh, don't forget about the roaster cook. And then when you would ask, where is this, um, where is Callbox owner? No, Callbox owner is busy dancing the reel. Then you must mm. go and fetch Callbox owner because he was busy dancing the reel. So uh, the first day we were visited by, I think, about 30 donkeys. Yep. And most of the problems were harness wounds and all the donkeys received new bits. Um, we, each and every donkey received a, a veterinary pack, which was mm -hmm. more a, 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 a cleaning of wounds, um, ointments, um, gloves, etc. Yeah. Um, and... and and I also think yeah, what was yeah. really nice with the, commu the community days was, you know, that the, all the owners would sit with Ashley and help um, help to repair their harnesses and ask questions. And they were so happy that they could get some kind of material that they could repair their harnesses with, like um, needles and thread and some pieces of belting or leather or felt, because they really wanted to fix their harnesses. They just didn't have access to the to the material. Yeah. That's correct, Megan. I don't think if you can remember, one owner actually said to us that he walked to Wuppertal, which is on the other side mm, of the mountain. That's right, to get to leather. To, the, to, get, to get leather from, from mm, there, yes. Mm, mm, um, mm. What, what I find, what I really find found very surprising that day is that the donkeys didn't know apples or carrots. Yes, that's um, right. Everybody, yeah. And none of the donkeys had shoes on because nature... They, they feed adapt to the hard soil, you know, they didn't need mm. shoes. Mm. They didn't need shoes whatsoever. Um, and the overall condition of the donkey's body weight condition was not too bad. Mm. There's a photograph of the of the of a very bad harness and shame. Ashley yeah. worked so so hard. Mm. And it was mm. extremely hot, no, when those yeah. community days. Very hot. Yeah. I think well, I can't remember which community day it was. It was very busy and um I managed to, the person who's petrified of horses and that, I managed to keep myself safe through all of this. No no horse kicking me or standing on my toes or anything. And then one of the ladies of the community who was dancing the reel with such passion <laughs> stood on my foot and I could hardly walk. <laughs> so it, was, uh, but it was such fun. I mean, the, they, the, the Africa Burn really, they bring the Western Province Health Department there, the dentist, the it's a whole big day where, where all these services are brought to the Patstal so that the community can actually access them because otherwise, ordinarily, they wouldn't be able to. So it's a, it was very special. And some of the carts were painted up nicely and they gave them names and, um, yeah. yeah and number, num number plates, number plates. You know, number Megan, plates, I, also, yeah. I also did what was for, for what I felt was what was very important, you know, it was. The, the, the donkey, the equine was extremely important, but for us to start building a relationship with the mm. owner because um, they they don't, well, there are many people that come to us, but there's not a consistency in the help. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and it was really very important for us to, mm. to and I, I enjoyed every minute of that. Yeah. Um, 
but not all the donkeys could come to the could come to the community day hey megan it was quite a pity yeah, I think because that, the distance is yeah that's what we sort of realized is that going there to the tankwa every once a, a year for a day wasn't really sustainable we were making a bit of a difference and it was nice to see that we when we went back you saw a lot of that green belting for the harnessing they still had their bits it was a really yes. encouraging to see that but to really make a difference we decided what we do we'd come back to cape town and make full donkey harnesses and we would take in the old one and fit to the new one um and we would go rather than the patstal farm to farm so that the people who couldn't make it to the community day could actually benefit from the outreach so that was very successful and it was extremely well met and they were so it was wonderful that they were so happy to see us and um worked with us to help us fix their carts um and they were so appreciative of the help which was amazing Megan I don't think you can remember um at one farm you probably will remember the name of the farm because you were doing all the paperwork at one farm um one owner he had a horse as well and he showed that he does the the horse's feet with a knife with a, no, right. no 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 yeah. with a with a literally with a with a knife yeah um yeah. and actually assisted him with that and every time we would go back we would you know we would give a little bit of education but much more is needed um we would mm. give a little bit of education and we would hand over the vet packs and 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 you know the ointments and the purple spray oh they mm. just they so so thankful and so grateful for it uh, and I'll, I'll never forget Diana always used to say when she took out the bottle of hippy scrub which is like a looks like a cool drink is it the hippy scrub that the drink Diana yeah 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 and then yeah, she said yeah. und hau das nie cool drank nie hör er muss das boe in die kast sit das ist cool drank <laughs> <laughs> so that the children can't, yeah, can't reach it. it. Yeah. So we, we, the one trip that we went up, we travelled over a thousand kilometres on, in between the farms, visited farms, met them in their own homes. The poverty is, and un, un, is unbelievable. Um, you know, the, the, so that it, the fact that Africa Burn Outreach is there is, is an absolute godsend. Um, they assist the community with a lot of a lot of things. um and we also did a, a, a humane little humane education morning at one of the, at the only primary school in the whole of the tankwa called Elan's Flay um which was really sweet we did painting and horseshoe decoration we didn't take enough horseshoes i think there was there was so eager no, yes. um i think and that the, was the, the only time that Diana let anybody call her tani and she was alright <laughs> with it <laughs> but but making those long trips was also it was it was quite tough because you know the farms are very far from from each other it's like 30 between 13 40 40 kilometers now the african burn robert and conrad they know their way around so we took mm. diesel engine cans and mm. uh, at at we stopped it was at elan's play where we stopped and um, half our our um, um honesses and our luggage and bags were full of diesel it was not quite yeah it was not quite pleasant because we had to take diesel with because i mean we far from calfinia and we far from from sirius so we yes, had to yeah. fill up so yeah and you know the, the the wonderful thing um about all of these trips that they were all funded by africa burn you know the vet packs the the harnessing the our accommodation we were always looked after so well by the, by africa burn and um wonderful wonderful partners to have it and we always felt uh, very safe in the karoo and you know because if you don't know the tanka karoo i think you could wander around there for a year and not find anybody it was it's very desolate um yeah. so the farm the visiting of the farms were very nice um and i think that the owners appreciated the fact that we actually went there and uh, and saw them in their own in their yeah. own sort of setting yeah 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 but um, um Megan but also you know we said we're not allowed to take to talk too long because we can talk to tomorrow morning about the <laughs> but um also Megan you know what I really was pleased to see that every time when we go back and we see the donkeys because most of the time the donkeys are grazing out in the field and they are just only being brought back into the stables mm. once they need to be hitched and go and fetch the children or go to church or go somewhere is that they were less harness wounds and if you look at mm. the harnessing if you're asking to bring the harnesses they would still like you said earlier and they would still have the same bits 
and the same um, material that uh, we provided them uh, previously on previous yes. visits. Um, yeah. and, and they know how to stitch, but they don't yes. how, know exactly how to stitch correctly. So there's, there's still a gap there for us mm. um, to do, but if we, if we are if we also, definitely we made a change. Yeah. yeah, and I also think the fitting of the harnessing was very important. Because yeah. you can make a harnessing and it can look wonderful, but if you fit it incorrectly, it's just as bad. So Ashley, Ashley was amazing with that and that that's, that sort of um, education that he that he put across. Um, but I think it was the second last trip. We were um, the Tankwas ro roads are notorious for punctures. So most people who go to the tank were mm. end up with no punctures. We were very lucky actually. I think we only ever had one puncture and that was on the way to Sutherland. Um, but we were we were coming home and the the relief to actually get off the R three five five onto a tar road, you will not believe if you've been traveling those roads <laughs> for so long. There's no dust, <laughs> there's no bumps. It's just it's heaven. Um, so Diana says there's something wrong with the trailer. It's not pulling properly. So she says to Ashley, uh, turns around and says, you know, what do you think, think Ashley? So Ashley turns around and he says, yeah, oh no, it's a sneak. <laughs> so we stopped the bucky to get out to see now what's wrong with the tire. And that's what we found. We've been driving. <laughs> We've been driving all this way with the, on that. Anyway, the, every, Robert and everybody, because we couldn't go anywhere, they turned around and they found the rim like kilometers back. We still got it upstairs. So that was our first and worst puncture, but we managed to get back to Cape Town. Yeah, luckily, yeah. Mm. Um, so I wanted to sort of ask your opinion, Diana, in terms of what you think as an animal welfare inspector. I mean, if you look at the donkey's welfare and you look at the cart horse, cart horse's welfare, I mean, wh what do you kind of feel about that? Do you feel one is worse than the other? Are they completely different? Megan, it's, it's, uh, we actually discussed it the other day. It's a very interesting question. The, the donkeys in the Tankwa, they go through droughts, um, but nature is very wonderful. They look after itself. So the donkeys have a way and mean to look after themselves. Um, it's only when they are put in a cart with unfit harnesses and when they pull a car, a cart behind them that's not suitable, or when they get sick, when they mm. are abused, so to speak, in, in, in mm. inverted commas. Um, apart from that, they live a normal, natural, free life. You know, once mm. they've been used, once they've fetched the children from school, they put out in the in the field. But should the donkey be injured? Should the donkey mm. break it, break it the leg, then these the vets there are, are hundreds of kilometers away, and um, I know that they used to use um, the late um, Dr. Dumpis, Dr. Trichard. Mm. Uh, I don't know who they use now, but I mean, by the time the vet gets to the to the um, animal, it probably has suffered so much that they would rather shoot the animal. It would be better mm. to shoot the animal. Whereas in Cape Town, you've got all the feed, you've got all the water, you've got all the veterinary care you need, but the horses are being put in a cart and in a harness every day, and they're being worked every day. Mm. So to ask, ask you to answer your question, if I had to be a donkey or a horse, a donkey in a tanka or a horse in Cape Town, I really would have preferred preferred to be a donkey in a tanka mm. because there's no cell phone reception. <laughs> <laughs> but also, <laughs> I also think that, um, yeah, so, so so for the horse, like you say, there's certain things that, that you can get here, but they don't have that natural life. They work, they put in a backyard stable, they work, whereas That's the donkeys right. do have that, and they have that herd, the opportunity to be in a herd. Um, yeah, it, it's quite interesting. That's one of the things I've thought a lot about at, in the Tanqua. You get a lot of time to think and there. But Megan, also, if you notice, at, if you look at the donkeys, their demeanor, they're all, all very calm and none of them are mm. mean. You know, you can feel it, you can love and you can kiss them, you can touch their hind legs. Normally they would kick if they, 
but they are normally all of the donkeys most of the donkeys mm. we dealt with are really very very calm and they you mm. know they're very um giving so to speak yeah i mean i remember these two little ones well they're not so little but pronk uh, uh, um, a pink mate which is the, the little <laughs> the, the the jenny and pronk is the jack and they came and they were very shy in the beginning and then eventually they obviously thought okay well everything is fine and there was a, a molasses roll remember in the yes yes it's like yes. A, a, a drum with the molasses and the, by the end of the day their faces were like brown <laughs> like, they just were like this addict like um, batman and catnip but yeah. um yeah and it, i think that um i think we need to thank africa for burn for giving us the opportunity and being wonderful partners in this in in this outreach and we definitely will continue unfortunately with covid we haven't been able to but we're hoping that sometime in 2021 we will be um we'll be able to go out there again i miss the the quiet every time we go we stop as we get into the tankway and we stand there for 10 minutes just listening to the quiet and the sky and the beautiful night skies definitely so a very very special place yeah yeah, without doubt. And okay. um, I, I yeah. do miss that. Thank you. Thanks, Megan. Okay, bye. Thank you so much, Diana and Megan, for sharing your, your journeys and the wonderful stories um, with with us that you that you did in the Tankwa. Um, I was just thinking, listening to the stories, I am so coming with the two of you next time you go, not only to experience the important work that we do um, and to meet the wonderful people but also to go on an adventure and a, and, a, and a road trip that I'm sure that will be absolutely epic with the two of you. And also I'd like to see the fork in the road for myself. <laughs> Thanks once again. Did you know that there's another way to donate um, to Cart Horse? And that is through Give and Gain. It's um, very, very easy. You just go onto their website and you search for Cart Horse Protection Association and go on to um, the projects that we have and there's a donate button and it's as easy as um, clicking on that button and it'll take you to a payment portal. And the great thing about Give and Gain is, is that it's worldwide. So if you've got an aunt in the UK or the US that you want to donate to us, they can do it through the Give and Gain website. Another way to, to use the Give and Gain portal is to if you want to create your own project, if, you, if for instance, you are crazy and passionate about the R&R &R and want friends and family to donate to our sponsor a stable campaign, you can ask them, so you can go into Give and Gain, create um, a project under your name and your family and friends can go there and, and donate to our cause. So that's just another way to, to donate to the cart horses. And then as I mentioned last week, please, Remember to, to swipe your MySchool card. Um, you stand a chance to win 10,000 Rand. And when you win, we also win 10,000 Rand. Folks, next week we are going to be speaking to Jolise, which is um, our youngest equine welfare practitioner. Um, June is, is all about the youth, so that's what we will be concentrating on, on next month. But before we leave, here is our blast from the past for the week. In May um, 2020, last year, um, both Ghost and Smart were confiscated permanently and taken to our recovery and rehabilitation center, where they both have recovered beautifully. Ghost, the little gray, was found pulling a cart with the entire car on it. Not just the cell, the, cell, the cell of the car, the entire car. He was immediately confiscated. And then poor Smart was the most emaciated horse Inspector Diana had seen for many, many years. And he was also immediately confiscated. And as I said, both recovered wonderfully and they are up for adoption. So let us know if you if you're interested to, to find out more about those two precious horses. Then this brings the end to our stories about donkeys. Um, and like I said, next week we will be concentrating on, 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 on youth. This, um, sorry, but please remember to like and share our, our Facebook page and our YouTube page. 
And until next time, take care and be safe.